let's go ahead and talk about the tool instance. The main purpose of the tool instance is to act as a container of objects that your player can hold and listen to events when, for example, the player equips the tool, unequips the tool, or activates the tool. So let me go ahead and add a new tool instance to the starter pack. And inside of this tool, we have a few properties to manipulate some things. For example, you can manipulate the grip position of whatever object you want to hold in the tool. And we have some other properties for the behavior of the tool. For example, if we can drop it by pressing backspace on our keyboard, if we disable this, then players are not able to drop tools using the backspace key. Manual activation only is a property that dictates if we can use a function on the tool called activate. So if you set this to true, that means the tool can only be activated by a player clicking the mouse on their keyboard and you can't activate the tool artificially using scripts. This behavior of model streaming mode is actually some extra properties that belong to models. And that's because recently, not too long ago, tools became basically a subclass of the model class. So tools basically inherit properties from models, which includes, for example, an origin position, a model streaming mode, a scale and stuff like that. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to focus on specific tool things. And for example, the last one here is called requires handle. And this dictates if you need a handle in the tool or not. So for example, if you needed a tool that didn't require a player to hold anything, then you would set this to false. If you were to keep it at true, then you're going to need a part inside of the tool. For example, I'll create a part here and it has to be named handle exactly like this. And then I'm going to make sure it's unanchored and I'm going to disable can collide. And then if I go and play test the game and there we go, here's my part. This is my tool. And currently this is the position that my tool is set at. I can go ahead and manipulate the position of this tool by adjusting this grip property so I can move the position of the tool. For example, if I did one stud on the Y axis, you're going to see it moves down one stud. And then if I do, let's say negative one, it's going to move up one stud. If I decided to do one stud on the X axis, it's going to move to my character's left. And then if I do negative one, it's going to move to my character's right. And then finally for the Z axis, if I do one stud, it's going to move one stud in front of my character. And then of course, negative one moves one stud closer to my character. And then we have some other properties here to manipulate the orientation of the tool. Now let's actually have a little bit of fun with this. I'm going to delete the handle and then I'm going to disable requires handle. And I just wanna make a tool that creates an explosion wherever my player clicks on the map or in the game. So let's go ahead and add a local script in here. And let's make a reference to our tool, which is script.parent. And then let's go ahead and create a function for creating an explosion. And we need a position to set this explosion wherever it's going to explode in the workspace. So we'll get a position. And then what we can go ahead and do is listen for when this tool is activated. And there's an event called activated. And it says fires when the player clicks while a tool is equipped. So we can connect a function to this event and listen for when the tool is activated. When it is activated, then we can go ahead and create an explosion on the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the humanoid of the character that is currently activating this tool. And we can grab that by referring to the parent of the tool. And because we can only activate the tool while it is equipped, the parent of the tool should be a player's character model. And that means we should be able to grab the humanoid of that character model. And then we can go ahead and call our create explosion function and pass the position of that explosion. Now let me type annotate this here as a humanoid real quick so we can get some autofill features going. And if I refer to my humanoid, there's a property inside of the humanoid called target point. And it says describes the 3D position where the player controlling the humanoid last clicked in the world while using a tool. And it gives us a vector three. So that's the position we're going to create our explosion at. So we'll call our function and then inside of here we can just create a new explosion using instance.new we can go ahead and set the position of this explosion to the position pass of the function and then to have our explosion blow up we need to parent it inside of the workspace so we'll just set the parent equal to the workspace and then we could use something like the debris service to clean up the explosion afterwards so we'll just add this item to the debris service and we'll clean it up after like, let's say one second. So now 
we should have a tool that creates an explosion wherever we click. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Let me equip my tool and then if I click, there we go, look at that. We have created an explosion. Now currently this is executing only inside of a local script, so no other player in the game or the server is going to be able to see these effects. So if I create some explosions here and then quickly swap over to the server, as you can see the server doesn't see anything happening. If you wanted to be able to replicate this to the server, then what we need to do is create a server script and let's go ahead and add a remote event to allow the client to communicate with the server. We'll just call this remote event click. And then inside of my local script, let's go ahead and just copy this code here. Actually, let's copy all of this code and paste that into the server script. But this time we want to go ahead and make a reference to that event. We'll just call it event. And that is going to be equal to my tool dot click. And then we want to go ahead and listen for when this event is triggered. We'll get that player and the player should pass us the position where we want to create that explosion. And we'll just call our create explosion function and pass that position. Then on the client side, what we can go ahead and do, we can replace the code in here. We don't need that anymore and we don't need that anymore. And we'll also make a reference to that event. So tool.click. And then for our create explosion function, we'll just fire to the server and give the server the position where we would like to create the explosion. And then to demonstrate some of the other events inside of the tool, for example, there is an equipped event. So fired when the tool is equipped, we'll just connect a function to this and print out a message like the tool was equipped. And then the tool has another event called unequipped. So when the player no longer has it equipped, we can print something like the tool was unequipped. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and play the game. And now when we use our tool or we equip it, it says the tool was equipped. And then if I unequip it, there we go. The tool was unequipped and then we can re-equip it and then click. And there we go. It still creates our explosion. But this time it's now replicated to all players in the game because the explosion is being created by a server script. So if I make some explosions here and I swap over to the server. If you saw that there were explosions going on because it is replicating all players in the game the server can see it as well all right so that was a brief overview of the tool instance it just basically serves as kind of an abstract little instance that you can use to create whatever tools you imagine it gives you a couple of events that you can use to listen for when the player you know equips unequips the tool or activates the tool and you can also use that equip and unequipped events to hook up other stuff like maybe listen to specific input from the player and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.